So in today's video, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different to our usual content on here. We're gonna be doing uh, bubble photography. And now what I mean by bubble photography, we've got a fish tank set up over there. It's all filled up with water. We've just filled it up and we've just got a few other little things to do like putting our uh, background in, putting our gel on the flash. Um, because we're using a flash for this, we're not using uh, LED lighting. Reason being is I can get a much crisper and cleaner result using flash. I've got my camera set up in front of the fish tank and um, we've gone back about uh, probably a meter and a half and I'm using my 100 to 400. Now the reason why I'm using my 100 to 400, one, it's nice and sharp and it's probably my most reliable lens for sharpness. The aperture we're using for this to control our depth of field, because it's gonna be quite shallow. We're shooting at around 110 mil looking at the lens and um, our depth of field at this, uh, at this range is gonna be very, very shallow. So I have gone with f11. Now I have done a pre-focus in the uh, in the fish tank, and I did actually mark a line, uh, mark a cross inside the fish tank, so I know where to put my hand and release it. So what I'm going to be doing is basically, when I take the photo, I'm going to be standing from here. I'm hoping, uh, hopefully, I don't have to move the fish tank too far. I think I'm, I think I've probably pushed it too far back, to be honest. I thought I was going to reach it from behind, but to trigger the camera, I've got to use a cable release and. My cable release isn't that long to the, from, from the camera to there. Now we're going to do the rest of the setup and I want to talk you through it because it's more the important part of this. Um, I should also mention when setting up our camera settings, uh, we've got basically two settings. And what I mean by that, we've got two exposures. So the camera we're setting so it's actually darker than the environment we're shooting in. So we want to get that nice and darker, done a little uh, test shot. Um, so our 125th of a second works well, 100 ISO, and our aperture is f11, which is perfect. So our sync speed on the camera, I'm pretty sure with this camera, it could be around 200th of a second, but I'm playing it safe at 125th, and that's all the light we need to stop down on so we get rid of the ambient lighting. And then for our next exposure, um, we're using the flash to control the exposure that we need to light the subject. So that's gonna take a little bit of experimenting around. Um, I don't have ETTL, I've just got manual. So um, yeah, I go up and down by the flash pack. So this flash pack is a Elencrom Ranger Quattra hybrid, and it puts out 400 watt seconds. But on the um, channel B, it puts out, um, I think, let me have a quick look. It puts out 8.2 to 132 watts, um, well, watt seconds, I should say. So, yeah, we've got a good amount of power there. I don't think we need too much. And also, when it comes to flash, so what's going to freeze this? So, you know, I could use a 10 second long exposure. It's got nothing to do with freezing the action. The flash is what's going to freeze the action. And it's not the flash output and everything, it's the flash duration. So, the flash duration is how long the light will be on for. And, and turn off, you know. Um, so yeah, this is rated for one six thousandth of a second. Normally I like to use a speed light because they are rated for uh, like um, on the lower, lower end of the power pack, which is why we're using the channel B because if we choose channel A, it puts out a higher power. Channel B is more so for high speed sync work. So that's what we're gonna, or high speed uh, strobis work. So yeah, uh, that's why we got it on that setting. So yeah, um, I better stop talking and um, I'll just uh, finish off what we're doing here and I'll talk you the reasons why. So yeah, let's get started. That looks good. Um, I will need to just make sure there's no bubbles and everything on the front there. Um, I can see a few right now. And then I'll, so how I'll do that is just put my hand in front and just wipe it. Um, that normally gets rid of, rid of those bubbles. Now for me to just make sure there's no bubbles, get rid of any marks that are on the tank. I've used this for a lot of paint stuff in the past. So I want to make sure I've got that away. Um, more so around this sort of area, um, because that's the area we're shooting in. Um, and we're gonna, but what I am doing is I am shooting slightly wider just to allow for that area. But I am also getting a little bit of the water in the top here. It just adds a little bit of uh, detail. I might have to take a little bit out. It looks like it's a little full. About there, so I might need to take out about five liters of water. So yeah, I'll uh, get this. So put my hand in there. I want to be careful not to get anything on the front here. Uh, problem with using this with like paints and stuff, it tends to get quite dirty. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to drop some water out of this. It's uh, getting quite high, just putting my arm in there. And since we're gonna be using bubbles and everything, my arm in there, and then when the bubble gets to the top, it's gonna cause ripples on the surface. So yeah, I'll uh, get some water out of there. How's best to do this? 
Uh, I've got a jug. It's only a small one though. Okay, this is going to take a while. Now I do have a really big pipe. Bit of a clear, clear tubing, which I can, which I will use to drain this into the tank, into the uh, sink here. And that's the reason why I've done it. That's the reason why I've done it in the uh, kitchen versus being in a lounge or something, and it's easier to get water into as well. And it's basically the biggest area in the house, so I know when I go to England, I will need a bigger house. So I can do stuff like this and more. So since we've moved the fish tank forward, we're going to have to refocus and also we're going to have to move the camera back. So what I'm going to use is my little action camera here. I'm going to sink it down and put it on that little cross. So the reason why it's got nice contrast and I can easily see and focus on that. Now make sure there's no hairs in here. Now there are a couple of hairs, which um, are probably from my arm actually putting that in there. So now to bring it back. Probably about there. Okay, now we've come back. Um, now I just need to get my focus again. I'm going to check the framing as well. Now to bring out our light in, and we're going to pop it over here. Okay, so now we've got our flash nicely over the center of that, and we pulled it slightly forward. Now this will need a bit of adjusting. So we'll do a couple of tests, see how it goes. But now to pop on our blue gel. <laughs> now I wish I had a proper holder. But all we're going to do is duct tape that around there, and that's all we're going to really need to do, really. So I'll do that now. This stuff definitely takes its time over uh, landscape photography. But at least we're in a nice, cool environment this time. Got the air conditioner on. Now, I should mention you don't have to have expensive studio lights. Um, you can buy a cheap flash. Most of them have a really good flash duration. A speed light is recommended. They normally have a much faster flash duration, um, unless you go for a really um, expensive mono light, like a bronze color or some of those, and they've got a really nice flash duration. So yeah, when I say uh, cheap flashes, I mean something, you could spend $80 on a flash, it will be able to do the job. But now I will uh, bring this over, turn our modeling light on, and you'll be able to see what I mean. And we'll get it nicely set up. Bring this over. Just going to put the modeling light on now. I've got to hold it down for 10 seconds so it goes on permanently. So there we go, We've got the nice gel. You can see maybe a little bit of that blue coming into effect. That's going to work nicely. So yeah, I'll lower this down just a smidge. Be just careful because the head isn't waterproof. Okay, you're going to have to excuse the dark lighting. We're having to turn the lights down because of the reflections on the glass and everything. Um, so yeah. Now we're going to start getting into some shooting. I just need to grab my cable release. Now there's going to be some shine that's going to develop on the bubble, on the, uh, bubble itself. Let's see if I've got enough room. <laughs> this is going to be tight. Let's just check that. Yeah, that looks good. All right. So I know this camera as well. If I go a stop underexposed, the camera has got good um, file information, so I can pull those files out if need be. Um, so that's maybe what I might do. I don't want to go too much higher in power. Um, I haven't actually done this before with these flashes or with this flash before. So um, this is going to be a good test for me. And I do have some um, apprehensions. I'm a bit, so I'm a little bit worried if it's not going to be a fast enough flash duration. Um, but a six thousandth of a second normally freezes on most action. So yeah, and the bubbles aren't moving that quickly. Well, they are, but. It's not like um, trying to capture a bullet or something. Anyway, let's get this uh, set up. So, got that. I need to get my little action camera out and I'll raise you up. So make sure it's all working. Yep, that's working. By the way, we can only go one frame per second. So, I'm gonna see how the bubbles look as they come out. I need to get my action camera out of there, actually. Now we've got our focus all locked on. Make sure not to get any drips and everything on that front of that glass. Otherwise, we've got to clean it all off again. And we're making sure we don't bump the camera. If we bump the camera, we've got to refocus and recompose our image. So um, yeah, what I'm gonna use is this uh, cap here, uh, which is just um, from, hang on, I'm just gonna make sure I've got, <laughs> got a lot, bit of anxiety happening right now. So yeah, all that's good. 
Now, what was I going to say? Yeah, so I've just got this cap from a bit of polish, and um, what this allowed me to do is control the bubbles. I've done this uh, before. Um, I think it was probably about four years ago. I haven't done it since. And I used, I blew into a pipe and done the bubbles. Didn't really work, I didn't have the uniformity. Pretend my hand is the bottom of the fish tank. So instead of, uh, I could, there's multiple other ways I could do this, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do like this and then straight up like that. And it's gonna cause me to have this lovely bubble that's gonna be nice and big. And then as it goes to the top, we're gonna get our shot. And then when the bubbles get to about, now this is the fun bit, when it gets to about halfway, we want to take that shot. Now, if we don't get that frame, um, we can always do multiple takes. So that's probably what we're gonna have to do most likely here. Nope, and I was gonna think about using a polarizing filter, but I think that's just gonna cause um, maybe a bit, it's gonna reduce our light gathering ability by one and a half stops. I don't really wanna do that. And um, I don't think it's gonna really do too much here. Maybe it might be removed some of the shine but i want to keep some of the shine so yeah now to get over there and uh, take these photos okay so this is going to be pretty cool doing this and i'm looking forward to it again so this is going to be a little bit tricky i better not try and pull the camera i know sometimes i've got the urge to pull the camera but yeah i really don't want to do that so hopefully the composition and everything works for us um looking over the camera getting that in the composition and yeah so now i'm going to put my arm down i'm going to go from the top go nice and slow Go down to my cross, I can see it there. And also what I uh, want to try and do is I want to try and keep my, cam my arm out of the frame. Now this is going to be the tricky bit. And then also timing it. So I'm going to look through the front there and uh, time it like that. So yeah, wish us luck. So now we're going to get our first shot. I'm just going to make sure the, the flash goes off. Good. Now how does that look? I really want to have a look at that one. How did that go? Oh, that works nicely. Oh, that's very nice. Have another go, get the air. Make sure we don't get any drips on the front there of the tank and get another shot. So I'm gonna try and make it bigger at the beginning than just a slow, slow burst. So I'm gonna go down. Oh, damn it, that would have been so good if I <laughs> wasn't in awe of the bubble. I was going, wow, look at the size of that bubble. And it was just like, oh. All in my head, and I was just getting, oh, you, you twat, you had to take the photo. Why did you forget that photo? So, yeah, gonna have another go. Did I get that timing right? Now, this is where you've got to just do some testing to see if your timing is off. Yeah, I was off for that. So, I need to have another go. I really hope these turn out, otherwise, all this work. It's taken about two hours so far to get to this point. So, yeah, let's have another go. That looks good. I feel like I've got to zoom in a little bit. I feel like I'm too wide. Yeah, I've got to come in a bit. If I have my 5D in um, live view, the flash won't work. So you need to be in um, uh, live view off, basically. Um, so yeah, I'll get that out of there now. I think this is going to work better. Nice, tight framing. Everything's getting soaking wet, but this is a part of the fun of it. Get our thing right back down there. Camera, make sure, good. Oh, I've got a feeling that worked nicely. I can see that like, these two bubbles coming off. Let's check. Oh, I've done it too early. Done it too early. Oh, you bloody monkey. Okay. Oh no, I've got some drips on the front there. Oh, where's my cloth? I'll use my shirt. Okay. Oh no. God. Camera is getting wet by the looks of it. Okay, have another go. Doesn't feel like I got any water in it. bubbles in that. Okay, now have another go. Damn it, too early. I'm too late again. I got too excited. Now I'm going to keep going, doing this quicker now. I think we're getting our routine. As you can see, this is so much fun. I wish I was able to bring you along on this. Maybe one day I might do, um, have a studio or something, bring it, set up in my home or something, or go out on location, we get a fish tank, we have a go at doing different things. Um, there's so many different things I know what to do. Um, this is just a little bit of a small setup, a little bit of a play, so yeah. Okay, let's have another go. So we've moved the camera up a little bit, 
just to get more of the top and hopefully get less of my hand in the frame. If I had a bigger fish tank, something twice the size, it would be so much easier I can get my hat more of my arm in. Um, but this one, I'm limited. So I've done this in the past and I waited until the water was still like it is now and then done it. But what I found was, was quick with it and had the ripples on the surface, actually made it look like we were actually shooting underwater. Um, it looked way more realistic. It looked like we were shooting in the ocean. So that's a nice thing we're sort of emulating here. So yeah, let's keep going. Oh, my back is really starting to hurt. I'm gonna to have to call it quits in a minute because I can't do this with my back, bad back like this. Damn it. Another way we're using a laser and a MyOps smart trigger. Um, but I don't really have a laser and I don't really have any way of supporting it all. And I don't have a cable long enough to reach the camera. So yeah, I can't really do that. Oh. But yeah, as you can see, it takes a lot of tries. So make sure you've got a nice capacity camera card in your camera. Oh, damn it. And you're not talking to a camera again, distracted as you take photos. Now you basically get my reaction to seeing what these look like. Okay, that's good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was interesting getting the one above the water. Oh, uh, just annoying my arms in the shop. I don't know if I can climb my arm out. Oh, I've got a good one there. I'll show them there's drips in the front of the top of the glass. I've got some good ones in there. Can I call them funky? Oh wow, I've got a lot more than I thought. Oh yeah, there's some nice ones in there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep um, taking some more photos. So I think that's probably going to be it now. Um, everything is wet, I'm wet, um, the floor is wet, the house is wet. That's just one of the things that come with this. Yeah, I think our light is starting to go flat as well. The, I noticed the, uh, the Ellen Crom unit is uh, flashing at me. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully this inspires you to do the same. My only thing I would say is probably use a bigger fish tank because this thing is tiny. It's something twice the size would be would work a lot better. Yeah, do it near an area where you can easily drain it or maybe do it outside if you want. And I recommend when it comes to draining something because draining something like this with a garden hose is too slow. So what I've got is this nice big hose here. It's about an inch in diameter. So yeah, gonna use that. Well, oh, going to use that uh, to drain it. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed this video. Also, um, I noticed the images they're nice and sharp, aren't they? They're nice and crisp. So the flash duration of this unit is actually sufficient. So that's something I've learned about my system, my pack, which is uh, great. So good to know for the future when we do things like this. Um, I'm interested to see what its limits are for freezing motion. So yeah, um, might do some mountain bike stuff in the future. Probably when we get back to England, I'd say, um, with this nice Ellen Crom uh, unit. So yeah. Um, yeah, it's been, been fun. I hope you've enjoyed it, um, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Okay, bye for now. Oh, now who's going to clean up all this mess? Oh, got my little camera on still. So, bye-bye. Bye-bye.